Hello and welcome to our thrifty, frugal and money-saving kitchen here in Brittany in northwest France. If you're here for the very first time, my name is Jane and my husband Michael is behind the camera. We are early retirees, we are debt and mortgage free and we live a thrifty life on a lower than average income and every Friday we share our struggle meals, our low cost food, so welcome to Frugal Food on Friday. cooking and eating on a reduced budget or a tight budget, it can get a bit same old, same old, can't it? Because another sandwich for lunch, more rice, more pasta, those kind of low budget things. But there are little tricks to that that you can spice up what you cook. So for example, I make our own caramelised onion chutney, so simple to make. I make this when onions are dirt cheap. All of this huge sack of onions was four euros. So I'll be making more of this and putting it away. It also makes a nice thank you gift to give to people as well. Now here in France, things like stir fry sauces are very expensive and they can be. And often, if you grow your own chilies, for example, or when chilies are on offer and ginger and garlic is a low cost food anyway, I make my own ginger, chilli and garlic chutney. It's more of a stir fry sauce, it's very sticky, it's sweet, it's gingery, it's pungent. You can add it to rice, you can make stir fries, you can add it to Chinese style food or Indian style food to give it a real punch of flavour, making something very ordinary and very cheap a bit more exciting. Let's go to our first recipe today where I show you how I make my ginger, chilli and garlic chutney. I'm going to be making ginger, chilli and garlic chutney. Chutney is a really easy thing to make because it's got a very simple ratio. You have three parts vegetables or vegetables and fruit and one part vinegar and half of one part of sugar. So if you have 300 grams of vegetables you have 100 millilitres of vinegar and 50 grams of sugar. But as I want this to be for adding to meals that I'm cooking, such as sticky pulled pork or pulled pork, for example, I'm going to go double the sugar. So I will have three parts of the vegetables and I will have one part of the cider and equally one part of the sugar. So what I have to do first is I have to Peel and chop the onion, peel and chop the garlic, peel and chop the ginger, take the stalks off the chilies and finally chop them. Uh, what I will do to do that is I will chop them into reasonable sized chunks and then pulse them in the food processor to make them small. If I was making a chutney to eat with cheese or meat, I'd want the lumps to be bigger. But I don't want the lumps to be bigger, I want the lumps to be small because this is a cooking sauce. Here is everything that is peeled. So I like to round numbers up, so 798, I'm going to call that 800 grams, which is one onion, uh, three whole bulbs of garlic, one hand-sized piece of ginger, and about eight red chilies. And what I'm gonna do with this now is I'm gonna pop the lot in my food processor until it's little bits because I'm making a sauce for cooking with and I want it to be quite fine. And because I have 800 grams of the vegetables, I will need the ratio so that's three parts, so 
So I take 800, I'll divide it by three, giving me 266.7. Well, I'm gonna round that up to 270 grams of sugar and 270 millilitres of vinegar. Here is the finished result. And you can see, I'll show you now how finely this is chopped, how finely you want it. You may be very impressive with your knife skills, but I'm not to get it to be that small. You can see it's all very finely chopped. Now I'm going to show you how I measure this now. Let's tip the camera down again. Let's put my scale on. So I know that I need 270 grams of sugar. So it's on zero. I'll gently put this sugar in. So that's 270. Now the marvellous thing about the metric system Oops, unit millilitres. I'll show you it in grams. You can weigh it. Grams. Okay, zero. I'm just going to weigh out then 270 grams, which is the same as millilitres, of cider vinegar. So I've brought this to a boil. I'm now going to leave this simmering away, stirring occasionally. For about 30 minutes. And after about 30 minutes, where well, as you can see, I can move my spatula very easily. After 30 minutes, it becomes jammy. It becomes sticky. So I'm going to let it bubble away, simmering away for 30 minutes. This has been simmering for about 25 minutes now. I wasn't very happy with what I would call the jamminess of it. It wasn't jammy enough. So I added another 100 grams of sugar and I also added one teaspoon of salt. In my oven right now, I have four clean jam jars. In the oven, the oven's on 150 centigrade. And over there, I am boiling the lids. That sterilizes the jar and the lids. I'm going to show you now what I mean by jamminess. So I've got a, if you can see it's shining on the back of the spatula, it's because it's formed a kind of syrup. And you can kind of go in the texture here with this because it is a sauce. You're going with the texture of a sweet chilli sauce. And that's what we have. My jam jars are sterilised. My lids are sterilised. There is such a high sugar and vinegar content in chutney or such a high sugar content in jam that the sugar or the vinegar, or in this case, both, will preserve it. So we do not make chutney or jam and then pressure bath it. We don't do that. And I'm going to use my jam funnel and I will pour it in. If you don't have a jam funnel, pour your sauce into a jug and then pour it into your jam jars. I'm going to hold the jar, which as I said is very hot, with a dishcloth.
the lovely science bit is as this cools, it will actually create a vacuum and the lids, which are now out, will pop in. And as they're cooling, you can literally hear them pop and they will have sealed themselves. Let me now show you what I do with my ginger, chilli and garlic chutney. It's sticky and sweet. It's very, it has the texture of sweet chilli sauce. It has the kick of ginger in there and all the garlic in there. And it's all stuff I just can't easily get here in France. So I make it in advance. I'm going to make my version of egg fried rice. I've got my saucepan here with a few tablespoons of oil in it. I have one mug of uncooked rice that I cooked with two mugs of water and a sprinkle of salt until it was just cooked. I have here two chopped and fried medium onions. I will finish frying them when I show you how I cook it. I have half a tin of sweet corn that needed using up. I had half a cup of peas and then I had four small carrots that I cooked. And here I've got four small eggs that I have scrambled. And I'll go through what I'm going to do. First of all, I will heat this, I will add the onions and I will mix in a good two dessert spoons, tablespoons of the ginger, chilli and garlic and stir it through. And I will just add all the other ingredients and heat it through and serve it. So there's my onions cooking. You turn that down. I'm now going to add in all my other ingredients. but not the egg. And we get this all combined. Keep stirring that through and then check with a spoon to make sure everything is, you need to test it by eating it of course, and make sure everything is thoroughly heated through. So I'm going to get a spoon. And let me check this. You need to stir it for about three minutes. It's thoroughly cooked through. Great thing to use as a spatula because you can catch anything that might get stuck from the bottom. So now I'm going to add the egg. So there we are. There is the finished egg fried rice. And when you eat it, you get that hit from the garlic and the ginger and the chili. And of course, from adding the sugar, when you cook it, you've got that sweetness and that tang of vinegar in the background. It's super, it keeps in the fridge for ages. 
And as you well know with egg fried rice, when you've brought it back from the takeaway, you can have it, keep it in the fridge and warm it through very thoroughly afterwards. I know some people will not reheat rice. That is absolutely your choice. Some of us do, and that is okay. So there is the finished article. Egg fried rice. Great protein in there from the egg. Plenty of colour from the vegetables. And of course, good starches from the rice. Actually, I think for a lunch, it's a good meal in itself. Let's talk about caramelised onion chutney. Now, if you're British, you'll know all about chutney. It, we love it. We love it. We love it with cheese. We love it with bread. We love it with cold meats. We love it, we love it with leftover meat. It's superb with leftover meat. We love it with salad. It's just one of those things that we absolutely adore and it can be really expensive. So here's my recipe today of how to make caramelised onion chutney. Let's get started with my caramelised onion chutney. I have got in here 300 grams of sugar. I've got dark brown natural sugar in here. Soft brown, dark sh brown sugar will be great. I have one and a half kilos of peeled and sliced onions. 400 millilitres of balsamic vinegar. One teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of chilli flakes. And I would only need one teaspoon of mustard seeds. But I can't get mustard seed, so I've got whole grain mustard. I will add this and taste it as I go, because I'm not quite sure, but it's a good alternative. You could totally leave that out if you wanted. You could totally leave out the chilies if you wanted. The basis of it is sugar, onions, and vinegar. Here is the first stage of making a caramelized onion chutney. Get yourself at the biggest saucepan you have. The bigger the better. Put into the bottom a couple of tablespoons of oil. I've used sunflower oil. Use the oil of your choice. And once it's warm, we are going to gently cook the onions, but we are going to soften them right down, but we are not going to brown them. So we're gonna cook them really gently. So I will cook those away and we'll come back and I've cooked them down. Okay, I've cooked them down. Just started to get a little bit of colour and soften. And this is the point I add all my other ingredients. In goes my sugar. Sorry about that. In goes my vinegar. Now, I'm going to add one teaspoon of the mustard seeds and all the salt and all the chili flakes. And I'm just gonna let that bubble and cook down and I will keep stirring. So there it is, bubbling away. I'm going to get it to a nice simmer and then I will turn it right down and let it cook very gently for two hours. I'll have to go and stir it every so many minutes, every 15 minutes because it gets stickier and sweeter. So as you can see, I'll let it bubble for a moment and then I will turn it right down and just let it cook very slowly for two hours. 
Here it is cooking away. You can see it's just bubbling gently. I might even turn that down. One less. So let's give it a stir. Turn it over so the onions underneath become the onions on top. And you can see it browning and getting stickier and stickier. And onions themselves release sugar and become stickier and stickier. I'm hoping to get four really good jars of caramelised onion chutney out of this and I'll leave this cook even longer. Okay, this has been cooking for quite a time now. You know when it's almost ready that it will leave a sticky trail. This isn't quite there yet. You can see it's not that sticky. You can see it's still quite liquidy. So it still needs a lot more cooking. But because I'm getting a bit impatient with this, I might add half a cup more of sugar and you can always do that. I will show you in my bowl. I'm testing it as I go. Is it the level of sweetness and acidity, the blend that I like? Because to me that's not sticky enough. So I'm going to add half a cup more sugar, cook it for a bit longer and see how sticky that gets. Okay, as this is coming up to the end of its cooking time, I've got my jam jars in a low oven and I'm going to leave them in there to completely sterilise them. And I'll leave them in there for about 15 minutes in a low oven. And the jam jar lids I have put in a saucepan with water and I will boil them for a couple of minutes so they are completely sterilised. I'm going to test the jamminess of this. I have the plate that's chilled and it's been in the freezer. I put some chutney on this. I'll leave it in the freezer for just about 20-30 seconds and if I can push my finger, finger through it and it wrinkles, I know we've reached setting point. So I've let my chutney bubble away. My jam jars are very hot. I will be handling them with a cloth. I use a metal jam funnel. Don't make the mistake I did of buying a plastic one, putting it on the jam jars, which were boiling hot. And it melted it, so I found myself a metal one. And I'll start filling up my jars. Now chutney isn't something that can be eaten straight away. It needs, really, to mature but this has a very mature taste straight away so I might leave this a little bit and have that tested or we'll get Mike to test it with some bread and cheese later there we are five fabulous jars of onion chutney that's red hot now We do not water bath our chutneys or pickles. There is so much sugar and so much vinegar in these that they won't need it. Also, gosh, these are really hot. Please be careful if you do this. My little dog's looking at me as if to say, why are you standing there, Jane? What are you doing? They're ever so hot. As these cool, they will completely seal themselves. They will last, oh, a year or more. You can make chutney one year, 
and eat it the next. So I'll let this one cool and then I'll see what Mike thinks about that on some bread later on. So as this cools, the lids will go down and it will completely seal. And like I said, we do not water bath or pressure bath these. The vinegar and the sugar will completely, will completely preserve it. Here is the caramelised onion chutney. You can see how thick and brown and sticky it is. And here is tonight's dinner. Uh, this is Mike's cheese on toast. He gets some nice crusty bread. I get some anemic looking gluten free bread. But anyway, let's show what we would do with this. So, there is nothing like cheese on toast with a bit of chutney on top. It really does make cheese on toast absolutely delicious. So there it is. Caramelised onion chutney on cheese and tomato on toast with simp. Great way to use it up. It's great with any cheese or any cold meat. There they are little pots of thrifty treasure to make very mundane mealtimes yummy for the future. So if you enjoyed that and if you enjoy our channel in any way at all, go on, give it a like. We're building this channel, we're sending it out to everybody who's trying to save money right now and you with your likes are helping. If you're not a subscriber and I know half of you watching are not, go on, hit the subscribe button. It costs you nothing, it helps us grow the channel. But most of all, I love your comments. So I want to know, what do you pickle? What do you make into a chutney or a sauce? Do you make your own ketchup from your own tomatoes, for example? Are you a jam maker? Do you pickle things? Leave me a comment below. A recipe would be nice to share with everybody with this wonderful frugal community that we're growing here. Just leaves me to say thank you so much to everyone who watches. We genuinely appreciate it. And we'll see you again very soon. Goodbye for now.